All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, you won't believe this. In fact, I've just had to pinch myself because I didn't believe it. The sun is out. We're on the outskirts of Manchester in February, and we've got blue skies and warm sunshine. Who'd have thought it? Certainly not me. Anyway, listen up, guys. I've got something to tell you. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of the full-size Range Rover. I've done countless videos with them over the years. I've owned several. And I just honestly think they're the best cars in the world. You can't beat a full-size Range Rover. But after I recently posted two back-to-back -back videos with a full-size L322 model Range Rover, I was reading through the comments and, well, it was fairly unanimous, actually. All the comments seem to say the same thing. Enough is enough, Matt. We're bored of full-size Range Rovers. Get something else on the channel. We're just genuinely losing interest. So because I'm not a dictator and I don't have cloth ears, I took all your comments to heart. So I immediately went out and sold my full-size Range Rover. And I bought this. It's a 2014 Range Rover Sport. You see, totally different. As they say, variety is the spice of life. I've never had a new shaped sport as my own personal car before, so I thought I'd just give it a try. What could possibly go wrong? The trouble with most Range Rover sports are that they're so poorly specced, they just don't come with the level of extras that you'd expect from a Range Rover. However, this model's the autobiography dynamic, so I'm quite happy to tell you that it does. I've got a nice suede headlining. I've got heated front and rear seats. I've got a heated steering wheel couldn't possibly drive one without a heated steering wheel. You can't have cold mitts on a winter's morning, can you? How uncivilised. This model's also quite rare in that it's a seven-seater, so it's perfect for my invisible wife and non-existent children. They're going to love it. I've been using this now for a couple of days, and straight away I can tell you that it doesn't feel anywhere near as luxurious as a full-size Range Rover. And yet, I'm warming to it. I like the fact that the dash wraps around me and it's higher. You feel like you're cocooned by it. I like the fact that, as the name suggests, it's sporty to drive. It corners much more flatly. You've just got to get your head around the fact that it's nowhere near as luxurious as the full-size. I can say this with a certain degree of certainty. The Range Rover Sport is worse than the full-size Range Rover. But because I'm going through a, well, I don't know what it is, an early midlife crisis, menopause, I don't know. I just, I kind of prefer this right now because it feels like more of a young lad's car. As classy and dignified as the full-size Range Rover is, Latterly, I just kind of felt, whenever I went in it, I felt like I'd borrowed my dad's car. It does have the vague whiff of old man about it, whereas the Sport is much more youthful. The other good thing with the Range Rover Sport is its size. It's considerably smaller than its big brother, which means you can drive this thing round town and through the city centre much more easily. You can even drive this into any car park you like in the UK and manage to park it within the white lines. Speaking of white lines, this is a bit of a drug dealer's spec, isn't it? white with the black wheels and all the black bits. It's not really my cup of tea. I do quite like the look of it, I just don't think it's me, really, but, you know, change is good, isn't it? Let's try it, see what happens. When I park it up somewhere and I walk back to it, straight away I think, that's quite a good looking car. And then I think, hmm, I've got to get in it now, haven't I? And it's a little bit chavtastic, isn't it? It's a bit Essex. I suppose it's a good thing then that I live in Cheshire. Otherwise, I might get some unwanted attention. Just to be clear, I think the full-size Range Rover oozes class, whereas the Sport just tells the world that you're a freshly moneyed oik. Which is weird when you think about it, because the Sport is substantially cheaper than its bigger brother. No matter, as I say, I'll give it a try, keep it for four months, six months, I'll just see how it goes. You might be wondering which engine I've gone for. Now, it's nothing exciting. Under the bonnet of this one is the three litre turbo diesel V6. And straight away I can tell you I'm not a huge fan. I really miss the 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8 that was in my full size. So possibly in six months time I might look to upgrade this and get one with a V8 engine. But we'll see. One of the good things about my job is that you can chop and change your cars pretty much whenever you like. So that is quite a good perk. Especially for somebody like me who's got a short attention span and gets bored easily. Usually right about now in these videos, I'd go through the long list of faults that I've found and talk about how I'm going to fix them. But with this one, there aren't really. It was serviced just a month ago at Land Rover Leeds. The timing belt was replaced a year ago, so I don't need to do that. I will book it in for a gearbox service just because I'm a big believer in that. Oh, and I've noticed the parking sensors don't work, so I'll have to get those looked at. Hopefully it's just one sensor that's down. Both the front and rear brake discs look like they've been changed recently, so I don't need to do that. The wheels are in good condition, so I don't need to refurbish those. All the tyres are Pirelli Scorpions, I think, with about 6mm of tread on, so I don't need to replace those either. So, all in all, it's pretty good. One thing I do need to do though, and this is just cosmetic, so you might think I'm splitting hairs here, but the steering wheel's quite worn at the top, so I might take that to the trimmers next week and see if they can do anything with it. 
I expect they'll be able to take the steering wheel off and remove that bit of leather and replace it with some new leather. Something else I've considered doing, I want your opinion on this, it's got the post facelift 2018 onwards style rear lights, which I think look quite good. But I might, now I'm not usually this kind of guy, but I might buy the 2018 style front grille, lights, rear spoiler, rear bumper, and make it look like a 2018 model. What do you think? Let me know below in the comments if you think I should, if that's something that you'd like to, like to witness, because I'm not sure, like I say, it's not really my thing that. Well, I think that's about it. I just thought I'd keep you guys in the loop as to what's going on in my little weird car collection at the moment. So thank you as always for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then do check out my online course. I've created an online portal with nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. How to start, branding, funding, where to sort of stock from, it's all there. And it might point you in the right direction if you fancy a career change. So yeah, cheers guys, I'll see you next time.